Hey guys, welcome to the flat lab. Hey guys. Welcome back. Sorry for the delay, technical difficulties with the computer. Uh, sorry that uh, we're dress I'm dressed in shorts and flip flops. <laughs> what, what happened is my parents just got into town and uh, just a couple hours ago we, we were over there and we just ran back from there because we had to do this show. It's a short show, but I think you'll appreciate it. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, let's go right into the news. Okay. <laughs> Have to do that news intro. I got to figure out a better sequence to do that, but. First of all, I want to show you guys something that uh, Buck sent us, 7 Up on the platform. It's awesome. It is very cool. <clears throat> Check them out. The Flat Boys Knuckles. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and he's, uh, man, he's a really good artist, man. So we can do whatever we want with it. So I'm thinking t shirts would be awesome, man. Yeah, they Stickers look great. would be awesome. That too. They look great. Yep. Good job. Thank you so Buck. much for that, Buck. You should have the screen so we can see um, the monitor, man. If you wouldn't mind. The monitor? Yeah. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> well, also in this week's uh, flat news. Every idea. <laughs> you stream commercial. No. Um, this week is supposed to be our contest edition where we're going to. Uh, Unveil, cut out, play uh, the design of flat game contest. However, that contest has been canceled. So we're going to talk about some other things, and I, th I think it will be cool. Uh, hold on, I'm just trying to mute this. Before. I'm trying to mute this. Okay, we're good. I also want to mention that. Um, Kind of on a serious note, just for a minute, if I could. Sure. Um, Aunt Helen, I don't know, you know, some of you guys might be more familiar with Aunt Helen than others, but um, she's my aunt, and we go over there all the time. My uncle passed away a couple years ago, and we go over, Mark takes the trash out, she makes dinner for us, and, you know, we just hang out a lot. And uh, she hasn't been doing real well the past week or so. Well, it's kind of been building, building, building. She's got real bad arthritis, and... Um... It's just, um, it's really crippling her up. And, uh, you know, we, we're doing everything we can, and she really hates going to the doctors or anything. So She won't do it. She made us promise not to take her to the doctors and all. So she's fighting through it. She's doing a lot better now. She gets up and waves goodbye when we leave and at yeah, the window. Yeah, we were, we're, we're, <clears throat> we were really going through a rough <clears throat> patch for, um, in the, over this past week or so. And she seems to be on the, the way back up. But if you've called or if you've emailed, we are definitely behind on that because we've been spending a lot of time over there. Um, Thanks, Nick. A couple days straight, actually. So, um, <clears throat> you know. That's what we've been you, doing. It's been one thing after the next and then going over to mom and dad's. And I spent all day over there just mowing the lawn. It's a huge lawn, so it takes forever. And it took three guys all day to mow that lawn, pretty much. I mean, we... It was ridiculous. But anyway. So please keep it home in your prayers. <clears throat> yes. She could certainly need it. Um, we we are seeing improvement, but yeah, she's doing it, good. It's still we're in we're in a rough patch, so Yep. Um, we've been ordering out. It's been horrible. Instead <laughs> of getting home cooked meals. <laughs> no. She's doing really good and uh, I stay on her, you know. Yeah. She's on her, I'm on her, so I gotta just you know, I have to stay on her with it, it really keeps her going. Thanks guys. Really appreciate it. She's yeah. in our prayers. Adding it on to my prayer list. Sorry to hear about your thanks, aunt, guys. Mike. Yep. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Jovian. Nick. By the way, Nick, I have to apologize. I didn't get back to you. Um, this was supposed to be the release of Sketchy Cam, but 
Uh, I'm trying to work with Nick to try to get through it, but uh, to get a good clean version out there, and I haven't gotten back to him. And Nick, any any time you get a chance, if you could call us, um, not tonight because we're probably heading back over there to my parents. I don't know if we are or not. I got to help them unload the truck. I wanted to anyway, um, but um, maybe tomorrow. It's good to have them back in town. Yeah, maybe tomorrow sometime. If you get a chance or whatever, and uh, we'll get that together and get it uh, out there for the guys. It'll be awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> game entries. You already went over that? Yes, we received no game entries. So that is uh, off, right? The contest is up. Where is were you guys? Right? What happened? <laughs> I thought it was a really hard contest myself. So. Yeah, it was a tough one. Coming up with a new game concept is tough, you know? Let alone flat pieces, <clears throat> one sheet of foam, two players, challenging. You guys could have done it. <laughs> uh, I wanted to mention uh, what the, on the forum there, Igor is, um, has a new banner ad up. You guys might see it. Uh, Shinden, Shinden, uh, what is it? Shin, Shinden. ShindenRC.com. And it's a cool banner ad. It is a really cool. It's a flash banner ad. It was cool because I wanted to see if I could get it to work. But he sent us that. He's got a cool website where he's putting up these awesome videos, and he posted them on the platform too. Thanks, Igor. Uh, but if um, if you get a chance, check it out. I haven't figured out how to make it clickable because it's flash. I'm having a problem with that. But you know, in the meantime, I'm going to ask him if he can embed the link inside the flash so that way it'll just work. And I looked all over online. I can't find anything. Any code on, you know, if you click on it, it should go somewhere. So I think it has to be embedded right in the flash. But anyway, so I'll see if he can do that. But check out his site. It's cool, and his videos are awesome, man. He's really good with the graphics, too. Of course, his builds are amazing. Um, I wanted to talk about Pope Dan's biplane. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out. He's going to post. He said he was going to post the plans, and it's underneath uh, the uh, double-wing aircraft, so... Make sure you check that one out. It's buzzing. Um, talk about, uh, um, oh, I want to talk about um, Nick's Juca project. He did another update. So uh, making, what is it, making foam fly? Yeah. If you get a chance, check out his website. The banner ad's on there, too. And check out the progress he's made. He's doing really good with it. And uh, he's got the nose cowling mold made and now the canopy cowling mold made, or the canopy um Vacuum form mold made, so it's going to look cool when it goes together. Um, the Bosch collets, that's not, that was just a note to myself. Uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to talk about, uh, I went to All Things at Crash the other day, Mike, and I saw the Stinger Tricopter from Radical RC. Uh, John Bernard had written an article about it on the All Things at Crash. All he, things crash. All things crash. If you get a chance, check that out. It's a it's a really good read, and the pictures are good, and it's a nice looking tricopter. I mean, the kit looks awesome. <clears throat> Nick's a, is a case with flash. Thanks, Nick. Um, that's what I kept reading about that link. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now, uh, wait, is that it? Yes, that was it. <clears throat> Now, I wanted to get to something. You guys know about 3D printing, right? It's like, all of a sudden, it's it's taken over. And I keep questioning, why is it getting so big all of a sudden? This stuff, it's been around even since the 30s, people had patents on it. And then in the 80s, again, they had patents on it. And I thought, man, something must be going on. Well, as it turns out, something is going on. All the most major patents on 3D Stereo lithography, all types of 3D printing are just now running out. It seemed that 20 years ago there was a big boom on guys developing laser synthing, um, uh, layer object manufacturing, um, stereo lithography, and all kinds of different types of 3D printing. And I've been studying them for a long time, and these patents this year are running out on a lot of them. So I see these manufacturers, they even jumped the gun a little bit and went ahead and started creating some of these machines. And, of course, they're selling them for a fortune. But the process is so simple, it's ridiculous. And I can't believe we, we didn't jump on this before, but um, 
it's just really simple. It's too simple. And I think that's what they're afraid of because there's already several guys out there working on, um, you know, you know, making a, a printable 3D objects. And you guys might know about the MakerBot and also, excuse me, and also about um, their little cupcake machine that extrudes a hot ABS plastic filament onto, um, onto a platform that keeps lowering and it, and it just keeps filling it back and forth and it stacks it layer by layer. Well, you know, I studied that. The resolution, it's really cool, but I never liked the resolution of it. You couldn't really get, get a good detailed part. <clears throat> where stereolithography, where you cure resin a layer at a time using a laser, a blue, a blue edge laser, you can get really high detail. Well, since then, there's been patents that were applied for, for actually years ago, we were sitting over at Helms talking about different things, and I said, man, I think I have an idea for like the world's fastest 3D printer. What if you took a projector and shined it into a vat of UB curable resin, or even, um, what is it called, the, the screen printing emulsion, and just cured it a layer at a time, and that way, any model that you slice up, you can have on your computer, and you can display the slices one layer at a time. Well, it turns out, you know, people have already thought about that, and they, of course, and there's already patents for it and everything. Well, those patents are starting to run out, and now these companies are starting to do that, and you'll see, like, Z Corp have, they're starting to abandon all their powder printing, the ones where they do a layer of powder, and then they put, like, super glue in an inkjet printer head. They're starting to abandon that and go into this, uh, their Z Corp uh, Ultra, they call it. And all it is is a projector that shines into a vat of resin. And it's awesome, man. Dental implants, yep. Um, jewelry. Jewelry. Uh, jewelry is a big thing. There's another company out there called Digital Wax. And they actually mix um, wax in with the, <clears throat> with the polymer resin, UV resin, and, and they're able to actually make the casting from it. But anyway, before I get too far into it, I have a couple videos and stuff set up, a little bit of a presentation, and then we'll just go into uh, what we're working on in the flat lab. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay, so first of all, what happened was I came across this website from the University of Wisconsin, and it's a material research science uh, and engineering center. And these guys set up an experiment for for the kids basically um, I shouldn't say kids but for the students and the exter the experiment consists of you probably can't see it too well but it's basically a projector that shines down into a vat of resin uh, of the resin which they created themselves now you can buy UV curable resins online they're super expensive because they're used in you know in high-end medical industry and dental like uh, like uh, Thunderhawk. Thunderhawk is saying George there and usually they're they're really expensive and they're in package, packaging industry too but um, they're actually gonna come down in price a lot and not only that there's a couple companies out there that have some really inexpensive basically about $65 for a gallon is what what the normal UV resin goes for so Anyway, what they do is they shine that down into a beaker and they lower a plate down into the beaker. They use Microsoft PowerPoint and they shine a, you can see here on their laptop, oh, you can't see my cursor. Anyway, the, see the two circles there on the third picture down? That's them shining the layers from their laptop. They're building up a chess piece, the rook. So they build it up from the bottom. And you can see, uh, I'll go to the, uh, this next picture here. Uh, I know these pictures are really small, but you can basically see that it's building up the layers. And then finally, last but not least, they take a razor blade, they cut it off, and they're able to get really, really high resolutions on very, very small, intricate parts. Now, the cool thing about it is these are parts that are built from the inside and outside at the same time. So if you had, for instance, a ring within a ring, you would actually be able to... Um, to print that from the ground up and it would be interlocked like a chain that was that's never been taken apart um, it never had to be uh, taken apart for manufacturing or a gearbox or a bearing or anything that you want 
to prototype, you can do, and it would be a working model. Uh, for instance, a crescent wrench. If you printed a crescent wrench, it would actually work when it came off the machine. And that is awesome. So, and the, the best part about it is, now that this is all open, it's basically open source because, uh, you know, you can't repatent it. So everybody's jumping on it. And uh, we thought, let's build a really inexpensive solution for a machine to be able to utilize this technology since it's available. Um, we thought we'd blow the doors off a of 3D printing flat boy style. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna play a couple of videos and show you guys and see what you see what you think. Um, if it works, let's see. Um, there we go. We're developing a new technology for designers who use CAD CAM computers. This is so that the designer can directly make a prototype from the image that he has on the screen of his terminal. We call this technology stereolithography or three-dimensional printing. Stereolithography is a process that translates CAD designs into solid objects through a combination of laser, photochemistry, and software technologies. With 3D System Stereolithography Apparatus, or SLA, CAD data of the product design is first sliced into very thin cross-sections. A laser beam of ultraviolet light is then focused onto the surface of a vat of liquid photopolymer. The laser traces the cross-section of the part, turning a thin layer of the liquid plastic to solid. The cross-section is lowered and re-coated with liquid photopolymer, and the laser traces the next slice on top of the previous one. The process continues, layer by layer, until the part is complete. Unattended, the SLA works around the clock. Without tooling, machining, or cutting, a three-dimensional part is built in a matter of hours.
sorry about that, guys. The video is kind of long, but you get the you get the gist of, of how it all works. But the the amazing thing is the amount of detail that you can get in these objects. Now, the guy on that last video, I don't know if he worked for that company or what, because his machine looks a lot like the uh, Jet 3D, or what is it? Uh, I think it's Jet 3D Systems. And now there's a new machine out there by Rio Grande called the uh, uh, Digital Wax, and they use it for jewelry. Um, his machine builds from the bottom up, and um, that's basically uh, what we're going to show you later. But I want to go over some of the pictures to show you some of the detail that you can get with this um, method of 3D printing. Method, right. Okay, so here's a comparison. Here's a whistle that's done uh, in what they call, um, uh, what do they call it? FD, I uh, can't remember what it's called, but that's this is basically from the MakerBot type of machines. And you can kind of see all the lines and everything in it. Even though it's super cool, the difference is this. This is the same file done on using stereolithography. Um, here, for instance, is a bracelet that was done um, using the hot extrusion method. And here's that same bracelet file done using stereolithography. And here's a close-up of it. Um, here's a, a, a nest of rings, and this is kind of cool because they can test fit the stones before they actually uh, cast them, and then they cast them, and it turns out the same way. You can see it has the support structures on there. They're showing the guys they can mic the parts, and they're identical to the part as their 3D CAD file. Here's a flute that he did in three pieces. Um, then it, it can go together. One of the cool things about this, and I know that George Thunderhawk will love love this, is um, you can create completely new instruments that, that cannot be manufactured by machines today, that we have today, that would be playable instruments just to hear what they would sound like. Uh, a trumpet with four horns on it, or um, a mixture, a combination of several different instruments, for instance. Um, there's just some more pictures for the detail. Uh, this is my favorite. Uh, this is an alien skull taken off of DeviantArt um, website that uh, was a highly detailed 3D model that he converted over and, and printed it. And it just came out awesome, man. And it, you know, I'm not sure if the pictures are coming through giving it the justice, but even the little tiniest smallest part of that nose comes out, paper thin. Oops. So that is what we're super excited about. And when was it last year for that? Yeah, so. So it's going to be awesome, you guys. In order to create the world's fastest 3D printer, which was what the goal was at the time, uh, and Helen actually got Mark a projector for Christmas. And he proceeded to take it apart. <laughs> yeah, that's, of course I had to take it apart. But that's the Discovery Wonderwall. And it's, it's an LCD projector. And the way it works is there's a little LCD screen in there. And just like your laptops are in, if you've ever taken apart an LCD screen where the backlight is, if you take that backlight off and you play the LCD, you can still see it in there. It's, it's almost like looking at a reflection. But what they do is they put a light back here with the culminating lens, and they're able to shine that picture. Uh, and then they have another lens in the front to refocus it, to shine that picture on the wall. And it, it comes out really dim. It's not, it's not uh, what you need. What you need is super high contrast, you need super black blacks, super white whites. And the only way right now to get that, really, I'm not saying it's the only way, but the best way right now to get that is with DLP technology, which is a little chip from Texas Instrument that has um, million, millions of little mirrors on them. And those little mirrors can tilt, digital light projection. They can tilt and they can either tilt out of the way of the light or into the light. So each pixel is either on or off, and they're all controlled, and then they send it through a color wheel. 
or they send it through the color wheel first. I don't know. But anyway. But anyway, we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have one, and we got it through Tiger Direct. And uh, they had a good deal on them. Um, now, this has what they call 2,000 luminance, and it's also, which is pretty bright. And it also is DLP, and it's also 3D, which 3D ready, but we don't really care about that. Uh, 2,000 to 1 contrast ratio, and the lamp life is 4,000 hours. Now, they do have LED ones out. The luminance aren't as high, but I don't think we're going to need to worry about that. Because here's what I believe is going to happen in 3D print, in the world of 3D printing. I believe this is the fastest way to print 3D objects because it all depends on the resin. They're going to come up with better resins that cure way faster, and the computer and the projector can keep up with that. Uh, if you could picture, like right now, it takes about eight seconds to cure one layer, about um, what is it, 30 microns. Um, which is like 0. .0004 or something like that. I don't even know what the equivalent of that is of an inch. But anyway, it, it's it's ridiculous. It takes eight seconds to cure, but you watch the they're going to come up with a polymer with with the free radicals that'll be able to cure super fast, soon as light hits it. And when they do, that projector will be able to shine light. It basically, it'll look like a strobe light ta -ta 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 -ta, as the thing's dropping down into the resin and it's curing a layer every time. And then it'll pull that model up and you'll have a full blown. I mean, these models that are coming out right now are are the same tensile strength as injection molded parts. So, I mean, to be able to have a machine that could do that is going to be incredible. Yes. But anyway, so this is the start. This is what we've been experimenting with. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to take the cover off. All right. This is version one prototype of what we call the Growbot. And it's basically uh, the style that this will this will be a drawer under here. I don't know if you can see that. That'll, that'll have your, um, just a spot to keep your resin bottles and things. And maybe a scraper so you can scrape the plate. Uh, the door opens like this, which I love, <laughs> using the pantographic hinge again. And um, it's got, you probably can't see in there. <coughs> All you need is one axis. Um, and that's basically what it has, one axis. There's a stepper back here. One of the cool things that I've incorporated into this particular design is I've used the uh, gear reduction that we've used on the flat burner so we can get really high resolutions and compared to the ones that are connecting the uh, the all thread directly to the to the um, <coughs> excuse me the T nut so we're gonna get really high resolutions um, this is the plate that comes off and this is like I said it's just a prototype but I just want to see if we could make it work to where we can easily change the plates out slide them on and off um, we have a Fennel lens in here. There's a culminating lens that goes back here. And that's basically how it's going to work. And your vat of resin slides right in here. It'll have a black face on it. This will be tinted with UV uh, tint on the back, which is red. It's like a reddish orange tint. So that way the light doesn't mess anything up. Um, stepper motor and all that stuff's back here. Now, there's a mirror under here that tilts the image up from the back at 45 degrees. One of the things is these projectors aren't cheap. They're awesome to have though, you know, for your family. Trish and I went outside last night as we just got it in and we... Like 11 o'clock last night. Yeah, and we watched the flat lab on the side of the, of the flat shop. I mean, it was huge, man. You could shine it up into the sky and if the, if the clouds were... If the clouds are low enough, you could probably shine it right on the cloud. I mean, it's just so amazingly bright. And when you shine it on a wall, it looks like it's painted on there. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's so, really cool. So that's what we were doing. We watched the whole flat lab out there, pull out a couple lawn chairs. And um, now I forgot what the heck I was saying. Well, we wanted to make sure to maintain. Oh, yeah, that was the thing. You know, I don't want to build the projector into this machine. 
I want to basically be able to set the projector next to the machine or slide it into the back of the machine and build a 3D object. But anytime I want that projector to go show a movie, I can just pull it out there and we can go sit around a campfire and watch a movie on the side of the shop. I mean, heck, cool. we do a flat lab once a week. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't normally watch them later, guys. We did this time. Uh, we did because we wanted to check the lighting out on that last yeah. one. But anyway, Plus we had a projector and it was on the yes. side of this flat shop. It was awesome. So, so that's one of the reasons why there's a, that's one of the reasons why there's a hole in the back. Now you can see there's actually a double hole. This is going to be the one that holds the uh, culminating lens. Um, hold on a second. You can see that this is bigger than the majority of them. That's because our resin tray will be about nine inches by nine inches, nine and five eighths actually. We want it to have a bigger build area. Even if your support structure is smaller, we want it to have a bigger build area. So you got basically, let's say nine inches by nine inches by um, 11 inches tall. So you could do a full blown shampoo bottle concept or something if you wanted to. And it would be hollow and everything. Even the threads for the cap would be, when you take it out, you could screw the cap right on. It's just awesome, man. And one of the cool things is I'd really like to take this whole model and when it's complete, I want to print a little one out just like it with the working all thread and everything, you know, just something I was thinking about. It could totally, you know, reproduce itself. Yeah. So, like I said, this is prototype one of the 3D Grobot. I don't know if we're going to keep that name. That was just an yeah, idea. Yeah, you know, every, it, it's early, and we've made a lot of progress in a short period of time, but it's, yeah. it's all subject to change. It's the Grobot or the GB. Yeah. Yes, definitely start saving for a projector because it is the future, and we're on to it, man. We really want... Oh, that's... Yeah, AZ uh, Pilot is right. There is a guy that built his own 3D... Uh, I'm sorry, LED projector. I don't know if it's Lumen Lab or not, but Lumen Lab or not, but uh, I saw it somewhere on Indestructibles or something. But yeah, super looks, light landing gear, custom shaped servos, yeah, control horns, different types of uh, click clevises, quick connects, on and on. I mean, think about quad frames. Anything instance. you've ever wanted to have, pretty much, it made anything. out of plastic. Yep, hinges. Any type of hinge system, um, it's it's the future. It really is. Now they have these things that are mammoth, and it's so cool because everything is becoming open source. Now I've talked with uh, Jovian on the platform here, Nick, and I told him about it. He's super excited about it. I'm super excited about it. I've talked with uh, Blind Flight. Blind Flight is looking into the uh, the chemicals for us to see if you know to discover the the cheapest. Uh, UV curable resins that we can find out there that will work good and there's so many different types with different shore hardnesses and it's just going to be awesome and uh, anyway getting back with Nick is uh, Nick is going to write a program a plugin for SketchUp that will slice our models down and and basically allow us to uh, print them 3D print them so that's awesome and, and Nick's not the only one working on, on, Nick's the only one I know working on the SketchUp one, but there's other guys working on other ones that'll slice models down. And there's a lot of open source stuff out there now. It's all starting to come out. And um, so a machine is needed. A footprint is needed to apply all these cool uh, features to, to have the machine. Now, of course, you can build it out of anything. There's guys building them out of the 8020 aluminum. Um, you know, you can build it out of two by fours if you want it to, but we want it to have a nice locked together unit. Um, I can already tell you that I'm not sure about the way, the process of growing it up from the bottom, because on those particular machines, your resin tray has to have a solenoid, because what happens is the light shines through the bottom of the tray. It's a clear tray, resin tray, that holds your resin. This plat, this um, platform comes down. And it dips itself in like you saw in the video into the resin tray. The problem is there's there's a couple problems with this design. The first problem is the light shines through the bottom. The resin hardens to the resin tray and to the platform. And and every time that that thing moves up, it hardens both to the resin tray and to the next layer. So every time this thing moves, that resin tray has to tilt 
on a solenoid and, and brace, basically break that bottom seal off before it raises up to the next level. Well, I think that's a bad design. I don't like that idea at all. And uh, I thought there was a way around it because there's certain polycarbonates that it will not stick to, but um, it's just not working. Uh, you know, reading other people's posts about it, it's not working like it should. So I thought the only other solution is to shine the projector down from the top into a vat of resin and then just drop your platform down, just like that experiment from the University of Wisconsin. They basically shine the light down into the resin. They're hardening the top layer of resin and moving the model down on the platform. When it's done, the model comes up, you pop it off, you wash it off, and there it is. So I think it's that's the best way to go about it, really. And I, I want to, I still want to keep, I love the look of this because it looks like a little arcade machine, you know? And it just, it's awesome, man. It brings back memories. It's the GB. That's what we call it around mm -hmm. here. Uh, but anyway. So far, even the name could change. That's true. But we're super excited about it. And, uh, I mean, every spare second that we get, that we just try to work on that, you know? Um, and get something going, so. Um, Thunderhawk, uh, George, I wanted to talk to you about the resins and anybody else has any ideas about resins, that is going to be the hard part. Um, I've got a couple, I've got a couple places to look at. There's one called solareasy.com and they sell resins for surfboards. Like you basically cut your surfboard, you stick it out in the sun and it's UV curable and it's pretty cheap. I think it's 35 35 to 65 dollars for a gallon of that and it comes in a black bottle and uh, that would work good it's not probably not a high tensile strength and all that that you know that we're eventually want to look for but I think that's how it's going to become it's it's going to become like if you want resins that basically uh, become metal once you cook them in the oven or, or if you want resins that are uh, way harder than others, then it's going to cost more. But resins are going to be the key with these machines. And the cool, one of the other cool things about this particular machine is the resolution so high, it's like going from the old, uh, it's like going from the digital cameras back to the old film cameras because it's analog. You're using light. Even though you're using a digital projector to put it there and you do want the highest resolution you can get, it's still light, so it's still analog, and I like that about it. And I think that's the reason why you don't see that stacked look. It's got a real nice smooth finish right off of the uh, machine itself. Guys, this allows us the opportunity to be in competition, or not maybe not competition, but on the same level as companies that are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in machines that can do the same thing that this machine will do. So there's no excuses. I mean, we have the we will have the ability now. And it's going to be incredible to have that kind of power. The things we're going to create, it's going to open so many doors. So it's just the next thing, man, and it's awesome. Here here in the Flat Lab and Flat Boys and you know, our our motto in general has always been to bring manufacturing back yep. to America. Bring it back, you know, if that that has been our mission statement basically if uh if the, if the government is not going to make it happen, then it's up to the people to make it happen. I mean, we are, we are this country. And if we can get every single person that wants to manufacture in their own garage and get them the real tools to do it, you know, not just um, at a price that they can afford it. I mean, this is where it's at. And this, are, this is a golden opportunity, and we all should jump in on this. Uh, since there's a lot of open source stuff going on, we should pull our resources together. We'll start some threads on here and just everybody be a part of it. It's going to be one of the coolest projects ever, man. The things that we can create with this is just going to be limitless. It really is limitless. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's super cool and we're super, we're super excited about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we we got a lot of work. Oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. I don't know if you could see the laptop, but I was going to turn this on. It just looks red on the screen. Can we hit that light, babe? Which one? This guy? The big guy? Yeah. Let's see. I haven't turned it on in here. 
Um, this guy too? Yeah. Can I just turn the power strip off or is that going to mess it up? Um, just uh, unplug the light. I don't know. Which? I think it's the top one. It's the very top. Uh, I think it's the bottom. All right. No, that's the drill. Not that one. Next one down. Sorry. There you go. Okay. It takes a little while to get going. And it helps to take the cap off. I don't have a mirror in there right now. I just have aluminum foil. <laughs> but you can see it kind of <laughs> turning red in there. And uh, where's that lens? I do have the culminating lens here, which I can't, I really need to get in there because I'm too far away to make it really work. But maybe you can see this laptop. And basically this is this is one of the um, PowerPoint presentations that was part of the, um, the lab that the University of Wisconsin was working on. And they basically, it's all free. I mean, they basically share it with everyone. You could download these. And they sliced up some standard models. Now here's, what, what they do is they use red first. And for alignment purposes and also for focusing. So you got this red block and then you can look in here and line it up with your mirror and you can basically make sure that it's aligned with the with that lens. By the way, by the way that Fennel lens is going to be bigger so we can have bigger print areas. If we need it, I'm trying a whole different method. Um, oops. And then once you have it focused, you go through. It does a black screen between each one. Now this particular design is a chessboard. It's the whole board with all the players on it. And it sits on a dime. It's so small. And they'll tell you on here, do this two times. Now some of these presentations are timed already. As a matter of fact, I think I have one. Let me go in there real quick. How so. many props could you get out of a gallon? <laughs> Just imagine Actually, that's a good point. Imagine doing props, trying different prop designs without having to go through injection molding process. And then or when the you, mold. right, and then when you, yeah. Minimum we, orders. Yeah, we don't have to pay for that anymore. And then when you actually go through it. Okay, after this slide, PowerPoint will automatically advance every seven seconds. When it clicks, it's time to turn the stage. Well, they were turning their stage by hand. And you can't see it right now, but the light is being bounced up onto the bottom of that plate. And you'll see, let me uh, go through a couple of these. And you can see it's building, it's building a double helix of a DNA strand. Which is something that would be impossible to mill. Now in the future, I believe that the that the the machine will be able to print this fast or faster. You know, just go right through it. They got the Lincoln Memorial, and this all these things. I think you know this is these are real basic, but eventually, um, and I was talking to Nick about it. That I think that if we could incorporate a grayscale to where we could kind of tween between the frames. I think we, we're going to end up with even even a, 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 a better looking um, rendering, 3D model. But anyway, this Lincoln Memorial sits on top of a penny. It's just that small, and it's got the detail. All the columns around the edges, I'm not sure if you can see that. Now we just need a sketch of... Uh... Jovian said, depending on size, I would guess about 20, 20 props with a gallon. I would guess. Well, more. actually, um, I was I was reading on a, on a post. Here, let's turn these lights back on. This projector is so smart, man. If you tilt, it's got an accelerometer in it. So if you tilt it and the projection is up against a wall, you know, and you're if you're lower, of course, it would be higher. The thing automatically tilts the projection. To angle to meet the wall's angle. It's just really cool. Uh, what I wanted to tell you guys about the oh, the uh, one liter, according to these guys, 
um, that okay, you're not in the camera. According, according to the guys that do the jewelry, one liter of the resin that they're using now, which is that digital wax stuff, is like five hundred and something dollars a liter. It's ridiculous. But anyway, one liter of that will do a thousand nested models, which are you know as many rings as you can fit on that little platform uh, a thousand times. So that's really that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. Um, now all we need is a sketch of plug in that can create props. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see a 12 by 12 by 12 print area. Oh my gosh, look what I, gosh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, I would, I just can't wait. I mean, just the fact that, you know, you could print inside and outside is just incredible to me. I cannot wait to get this going. I'm, I'm actually going to purchase some of this um, uh, solar easy UV curable resins. And I'm going to start there. I actually have some um, some speedball silk screening uh, photo emulsion. Might come out real rubbery, but it might work. I think it's going to take a while between each one, but I, I said, hey, let's give it a try. That stuff's pretty cheap. It is, yeah. We picked that up at Michael's. Um, let's see. They're talking amongst themselves. Oh, all right. Well, guys, uh, I hope you're excited as, as excited as we are about it because we are. And uh, I got to get back. I'm going to, my parents probably already unloaded that truck, but I'm going to give them a call and see if they did and uh, give them a hand with that. But uh, listen, guys, have a great night and just have be, a happy Memorial Day weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. Be assured things are happening here and we're trying to get this going as quick as possible so we can all just start making stuff. It's going to be gonna cool. take time, though. It is sure. going to take time, but definitely. But um, like I said, let's make it a joint project. Everybody, if you can post in there, in you know, under underneath the, uh, I think it's under the area where it says uh, help vote on the next um, flat printer. You know, flat voice machine. Um, we could talk about it in there. It's going to be cool, man. It's going to be open source. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So. I can't wait. All right, guys. <laughs> have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless. And Hope you guys get some time off this weekend. Yeah. Take it easy. Dude, you going on now. All right. Thanks, Al. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out in the flat lab. Oh, yeah. Check this out. <laughs> you got to love that door. Don't forget, every Wednesday night, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm Mark, and that's Trish. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. Way to go, Buck. Access denied. Server admin status revoked. Your connection to the server has been terminated. See you soon.